This is Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Financial support for Inside Badger Football is provided by Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Austin Wingfield State Farm, Southern Bank Corp, Chad Kesterson Shelter Insurance, Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson and Kneebone, Clark County Farm Bureau, Dairy Queen, Pediatrics Plus, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Collection, Midian Digital Creations, Andy's Restaurant of Arkadelphia, and Ishrio Word Law Farmers Insurance. The host of Inside Badger Football is Chase Hartzell. And welcome back to Inside Badger Football with Trey Shucker. I'm your host, Chase Hartzell. And as always, I'm joined by Arkadelphia head coach, Trey Shucker. Coach Shucker, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me today. So we look back at this last week, bouncing back from a tough loss against Robinson the week prior with a huge win over Fountain Lake at home. Yeah, you know, it was great to get back in front of our home crowd. Um, it was homecoming, just a big environment for our kids to play in. And uh, it was a really good team win for us overall. Our offense played well, our defense was playing well and wrapping up and tackling. And, you know, our special teams made some big plays as well. And uh, just a big overall team win for us. And it's always great to get to play in front of the Badger faithful yeah. at Badger Stadium, but especially in front of a homecoming crowd with both Badgers past and present there to support the team. What was that atmosphere like, especially after that win? Yeah, you know, it was huge. You know, our, uh, any, any night in Badger Stadium is a big night. It's a great environment. Um, and then, you know, being homecoming, it elevates that. And, you know, it's just a great, great environment to play and coach in. And, um, you know, it was consistent with that as well Friday night. Just a fun environment to play and fun game. And uh, our kids responded well to it and played well under the circumstance. So it was, it was great. And with the win on Friday night, the Badgers, again, avoiding back-to-back -back losses. They haven't lost back-to-back matchups at any time this season. Have been handed a few losses to start out the year, but again, they always bounce back from a loss with a win. What is it about this team that allows them to continue coming back week after week? Yeah, you know, we've, we've played in some really big games this season, and, um, you know, we've come up short at times. Um, but really, really good credit to our, our team for being able to, to have the mentality to be able to bounce back and, and respond in a positive way and, and prepare. You know, credit to our coaches as well for getting our team ready and getting each position group ready to, to take the field and be confident and, and just trust the process of the season. And, um, you know, just remember we're a good football team. You know, sometimes it can be difficult to, at, uh, to remember that, you know, when you, when you get a loss. Um, but just be consistent under the process of, um, the preparation and the process of growing as a team through the season and, and just continuing to get better every single day. And that's just the biggest point right now is just keep, keep getting better. And speaking of good things, in this matchup, it seemed like good decision making was a huge factor in the final outcome on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Uh, is that something you've been focusing on with both sides of both units? Absolutely, over the of the absolutely. Season? You know, offense, you know, we had a really big night on offense. Um, you know, the decision making was, was really good, um, very efficient. And then on defense, you know, um, Fountain Lake, their offense, they've had a good offense. They put up a lot of, a lot of points on opponents. Um, our defense did a great job at reading keys and understanding the scheme of what we're trying to attack and, and getting to the ball and wrap up and tackling. They did a great job. And with that, we're going to take a look at some of the highlights from last Friday's matchup. This was the homecoming game against Fountain Lake. Starting off, we got the ball, um, you know, didn't get the, the best field position that we'd like to start the game, but we knew that um, if we could just get some good early drives, you know, get some good plays early, 
Um, you know, this is a big, big run right here by Jay Sean Davis. You know, if we, f we felt like if we can get the ball in his hands early, he'd be able to get us some yards and get us some first downs. If we can get a couple first downs put together and score on this first drive, we'd, it'd set us up really good for the rest of the game. So this first drive was really big for us. Well, just a big, big throw right there by uh, Donovan Witten on the sideline to Alex Loy. And then just taking what the defense gives us. Um, Carter Babb had a really good game Friday night. You know, it's his, multi it's his third or fourth game to start, um, but he had a really big game also. You know, and then followed the drive right here, finished the drive right here with a big throw and catch um, from Donovan to, to Alex Loy. It's right here. Alex Loy did a great job at pressing vertical and really putting pressure on that corner and then snapping that, that post off at the top and just the throw was on time. It got through the window just in time to, to hit its mark, and we were able to catch it for a good touchdown. And with that score, just a couple of minutes off the clock in this one, but Arkadelphia already up 7 nothing. So we knew this first drive on defense was going to be huge for us also. You know, we, we knew they'd come out strong. Um, they're, they're a heavy run team, and, uh, you know, they're, they're very good at what they do. Um, they've been able to put up points all season on opponents. You know, our defense did a great job at getting to the ball. You see multiple blue jerseys on the ball right here, and, you know, that's what we want every play. You know, you see guys in the backfield disrupting the play, and, you know, just, we just want to fly around and be a physical defense, you know, wrap up well. You know, see secondary guys coming up and, and run fit, um, you know, right here. Just so aggressive in that first drive, just kind of got away from us watching the football. And Fountain Lake, one of the smaller teams you're going to see in the 4A in terms of overall number of players, but each one of them seems to have a lot of fight. And with this type of offense, going to drain a lot of clock, but they continue to fight for every yard. Yes, you know, they're, they do. Um, they are one of the smaller teams in our conference, you know, numbers wise. Um, but every player that they've got has a high motor. They just play with a high motor. And you see uh, right there was a big play for us. Uh, Ollie Ware, you know, really good pass breakup. And then great tackle right here by Kobe Buckley. I mean, he had a great night overall. And uh, just, I think it was his biggest night for us. And right here, you see him follow it up with a, a sack. Um, you know, really glad that he came out and played football this year. He's having a great year. Here he is, you know, snap of the ball. He's, he's flying around, you know, gets after the quarterback. He's like a bullet coming out of a gun. I mean, he's, he's awesome. And so that did result in a turnover on downs for Fountain Lakes and now Arkadelphia with the ball and the success from the first drive carrying over right here. Yeah, you know, and that was what we wanted. You know, we want to go down and score that first drive and get some momentum. You know, our defense, we felt like if we can get a stop that first drive on defense, um, we would be able to, to be able to sustain something moving forward and get some momentum and keep the momentum. And right here you see it didn't take long to score for our second drive. Donovan Witten does a great job of extending the play, making his read, and finding Loy downfield. Really good by Donovan, you know, keeping his eyes downfield as he escapes the pocket and, and finding Loy. And right there you see the PAT from Spencer Allen in the second quarter now, 14-0 Arkadelphia and Fountain Lake with the ball once again. This is an offense that's not going to have too many heavy hitting plays, but we see one of them right here with a great read, able to hit his man downfield. And there were some accurate passes, but some great pressure up front from the Badgers defense. Yeah, you know, they, they're good at what they do. You know, you see them breaking off a couple big runs right here. And, um, you know, they just, they're good at what they do. If we just stay true to the game plan defensively, put ourselves in a good position, and just go make the play. And we did that. Another excellent read from Kobe Buckley right there. You can already see he had the read made by the time the ball was even snapped, and just a great play there. Followed up with another strong stop here by the Arkadelphia defense. And it's a turnover on downs. Arkadelphia gets the ball despite another advance into Badger territory. Yeah, you know, it was really good. Multiple plays right there by Kobe Buckley. There's a couple plays where he could have been easily out leveraged and he wasn't, you know, he stayed true to, to what, what he's coached to do and was able to make play. 
Donovan right here, you know, wasn't able to find anything uh, in the passing game, so just was able to tuck and go. This is one of the plays of the night, you know, uh, wish we could have had back. Um, but, you know, Fountain Lake did a great job defensively on that drive for him. And that was the Badgers' only turnover. And that had a few early turnovers against Robinson that really helped to decide the final decision in that one. But in this case, Arkadelphia did a great job of securing the ball for most of the game. They're just kind of an incidental play that comes with the game. Yes, and, you know, that's something that uh, we have to do and continue to do is take care of the football. Um, you know, we did a great job of that Friday night. We had that one turnover, and that was our only one. You know, we, we wouldn't like to have any, um, but uh, – Especially in big games, you know, those turnovers really matter. And, uh, but every game is a big game in our conference. So this was a, you know, followed up on a turnover. You know, Donovan does a great job keeping his eyes on his reads. His reads are reading the run, so they get flat-footed. They try to play lower to play the run game, and we're able to get behind him um, with our receiver and makes a really good throw and catch. And another PAT there from Spencer Allen, still in the second quarter at Arkadelphia up 21-0. And here's an onside kick from to Fountain Lake. And you can see right there, Junior Juan Diggs takes it the distance. Great recovery there for the score. Yeah, you know, Spencer Allen, our kicker, did a great job Friday night with, with his kick placement. You know, he's able to uh, make all the PATs and um, – you know, that was just an unfortunate play. It was a really good onside kick. Big strong run by Jay Sean Davis. That was something, you know, something you don't see him do a lot of is, is run outside. He's more of a downhill back. But right there you show his speed getting outside. You know, that's something Donovan Winton's been able to do all season is extend plays and got us close. And then, you know, when we're that close, we get into our heavier package. And, you know, we're, our heavier package is really hard to stop when we're that close to the goal line, as it should be. And you saw the QB sneak right there from Winton, the cap off the drive. It's 28-7, to 7, still haven't reached halftime quite yet, but Donovan Winton already on his way to a monster game with four first-half touchdowns. Yeah, you know, he did a great job uh, bouncing back this week from – from the previous week and did a great job Friday night, you know, just trusting his reads, trusting uh, what, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to attack on offense. And uh, he did a great job Friday night, very proud of him. And so following an injury, the Cobras had to turn to Stephen DeArmond, who traditionally plays running back for the team. And they had him fill in some holes, both at the special teams and quarterback position there in the second half. And you saw a stop right there, and Arkadelphia already capitalizing on the good field position, a strong run there from Jay Sean Davis to start out. Yeah, you know, get the ball to him when we can. And then, uh, you know, just a big follow-up right here by Carter Babb, you know, playing fast to that wide receiver spot. You know, we, were, we had to move him around to a couple different spots uh, Friday. You know, he does a great job at, you know, avoiding contact by the defender right there. He slipped inside and got vertical, and we were able to find him. And so following the touchdown reception from the junior wide receiver, Allen capping off the drive with a PAT. Now 35-7 in the third quarter, Arkadelphia in the driver's seat. But Fountain Lake, one of those teams that even if the scoreboard's not in their favor at the time, they're going to continue to fight. Yeah, and that's what we had talked about all week with our team is, you know, it doesn't matter what the score is to them. You know, they're going to play the same way all game long. Um, and we've got to do the same thing. You know, that's something that we want to take pride in our, in our team is, you know, playing hard all game long, all four quarters. Um, doesn't matter who's on the field. Doesn't matter what the score is. You know, this is a really good return by Braylon Bailey. You know, I thought if he could have, could have broke one more tackle, he'd have been able to take it the whole way. But um, just a really good spot for us offensively, putting us in good field position. You know, big catch right here by Evan Bailey. Um, you know, sophomore was able to get on the field and, and, and had to play a lot of minutes Friday and then just capped off by a really big run by Jay Sean. It's 
So a little bit of a miscue there on the PAT, but Arkadelphia still in the lead, 41 to seven. And the Badgers still swarming to the ball and as fast in the third quarter as they were in the first quarter. That's right. And then, you know, that's what we talked about at halftime is, um, you know, it's a new half. Um, we want to play to our standard of football. You know, we want to play fast, we want to play physical, and we want to play with confidence. Really good fourth down stop there to, um, for our defense, you know, putting our offense back on the field. We're able to get some, some new guys into the game and you see Seth Golden right here with a, with a quick catch and then getting upfield for a good first down. You know, D'Angelo Buckley's our sophomore running back. He had a really good night running the football. Um, you know, really bright future ahead of him. So following the turnover on downs, Fountain Lake gets the ball back, and they really turned to the air game a lot more there in the second half. Yeah, you know, we, we did a great job of, of stopping their run. You know, our run defense was really good Friday night. So just putting them, getting them out of their element and make them do something they don't want to do. And, you know, Kobe Buckley does a great job right there. So the Badgers did get the interception but Fountain Lake would force a three and out, which was capped off by the punt that you see right here. And just a good read there by the Arkadelphia defense, one of many that we saw on Friday night. Cobras did pick up a little bit of momentum here on this drive, but of course, facing the Badgers defense, touchdowns have to be earned and they were turned away several times on this drive before they were able to cap it off in the end zone, which we will see here in just a minute. But you could see right there, holding tight at the goal line before this QB sneak finally caps off the drive. That was their first offensive touchdown of the game with just about three minutes left in the contest, just over three minutes left in the contest. And now it's 41 to 14, Arkadelphia is still in the lead. And we see Really what just served as a great cap for an excellent offensive night right here. Yeah, you know, we were able to get um, our, our second group guys in, some sophomores, some juniors. Um, you know, just really good to see those guys be successful and we're able to go down and score. You know, it was a big play right there by Seth Golden. Um, just finding space, getting to it. We were able to get him the ball and he finished it off with a big, big touchdown. Yep, and that right there wraps it up. Your final score in that one, Arkadelphia 48 and Fountain Lake 14. With the win, Arkadelphia advancing to 3-3 three and three on the year, again ensuring no back-to-back -back losses yet this year. And more importantly, 2-1 and one in conference play, still right there near the top of the playoff picture in the 7-4A. That's right. You know, the biggest thing that we uh, can do right now is just control the controllables. We control how we prepare. We control, um, you know, how we attack the, the practice week in the game week and just um, go out there and play Badger football and we'll be all right. And there were a lot of good things that we talked about in this game and I think coach that we're ready to reward some of those right now with our Badger Players of the Week. Our Offensive Player of the Week is Alex Loy. Um, play, starts receiver for us. You know, he had his best night tonight. You know, he had over 150 yards receiving um, with three touchdowns. Just a big night for him. Um, he's been a really good go-to player for us all year, but really stood out to us Friday night. Defensive player of the week was Kobe Buckley. Starts at safety for us. It's his first year playing football in our program, and um, just a great job Friday night. Had his biggest game, had uh, six tackles, um, two, two tackles for losses, had a sack, um, had multiple pa pass breakups. Just a great, great job Friday night by Kobe. Really proud of him. Braylon Bailey was our special teams player of the week. Um, you know, he had a huge return on that, that punt return. It was our first punt return of the season. Um, was one, one, one tackle away from really taking it, all, taking it the distance. Um, but really good job. He plays on multiple other special teams units for us and does a great job overall. Had a big night for him. And then uh, our Badger Spirit Award winner is Brandon Shrum, our athletic trainer. You know, he's one of those guys that um, it's kind of behind the scenes and doesn't, isn't really noticed until somebody needs him, but he's always there. He's at every game. Um, he's at every 
game in our program or our whole athletic program but you know football he's he's asked to be there so much for us does a great job at getting our guys back on the field you know he's always shows up with a positive attitude and handles a lot yeah a lot of great performances and contributors all around and congratulations to all of this week's badger of the week awards and right now we're going to take a look at the scoreboard from around the 7-4a first off you see that matchup we just broke down arkadelphia with the big win at home 48 14 during homecoming now we move down to the Celine River Showdown. Yeah. And how about this? Harmony Grove, Arkadelphia's opponent for next week. They didn't win any games in 2020, but this week or this year and this past week, they bounced back really strong and they pick up a huge rivalry win here over the Box Eye Miners. Yeah, this was a huge win for Harmony Grove. Um, you know, that's a big rivalry for them and it was a big game. You know, it's a, it's a tough fought game by both teams and Harmony Grove um, did enough to win. You know, they, they're a good football team. They're, they're going to run right at you, and they're going to try to take away the big pass on defense. And um, just a really good job by Harmony Grove. You know, that was a big win for them. And up next, it was the Ashdown Panthers visiting the Malvern Leopards. Ashdown, who Arkadelphia will also be playing in the next couple of weeks. That one's going to be at home against Badger Stadium. But they pick up a huge conference win at home in this one. And Ashdown still undefeated. Yeah, they're still undefeated. The you know, they're – there's uh, one of those teams that with every win, you know, they're gaining momentum. And uh, we'll, we'll see them in the future, and that'll be a big, big game to look out for uh, in the future. And Ashdown does have a pretty tough road ahead of them. You look at the three perennial contenders, when you look at the 7-4-A, you have Nashville this next week, and then after that you've got the stretch of Arkadelphia and Robinson. So still a lot of road to go for the Panthers, but they've looked excellent thus far. They have. They've done a great job. You know, they're, they're having a great season. And, um, you know, they've got, some, they've got a really good football team. And speaking of those perennial contenders, we saw two of them face off Robinson taking on Nashville, the Senators, with a dominant victory in this one, 62-14, to 14, the final score. Yeah, you know, Robinson's at the point where, you know, they're, they're a train on the tracks. You know, they're moving forwards, and you see them uh, every week. They're putting up big numbers. Um, they're just a really good football team. Um, just probably one of the biggest, fastest teams in 4A, no doubt. And just a great performance for them this year, eyeing that fifth straight conference title and what has been a very competitive conference over the last several years. Yeah, it, it really is. And, um, you know, it's their last season in the conference and, um, you know, they're having a big year. Yep. And with that, we're going to move on to the opponent that we alluded to a little bit earlier, and that is Haskell Harmony Grove this week's matchup. But before we get into that matchup, we just look at the overall state of the season at this point. Going on the road after six games already under your belt, do the conference road games start to get a little bit different here compared to some of the earlier ones you see in the season, or you know, is it just the same approach? Uh, it's, it's just the same approach. We want to keep things as normal as possible. You know, it doesn't matter if we're going to Haskell or if we're going to Greenbrier. Um, you know, it's all the same. We want to try to keep things normal and, and keep the same uh, schedule on things. And, uh, you know, good teams win on the road. So it's one of the things is, you know, we've got to win on the road. We've not done that much this year. And, um, you know, we'd like to prove that we can win on the road. And that's something that we've got to do. And that's something that we can prove this week. Yep. And along with that, now the 7-4-A playoff picture started to take a little bit of shape. Is that in the front of your minds? Or is that just kind of something that you, you just kind of yeah, keep to the back of your minds at this point in the season? At this point, there's still a lot of football left. And, and the biggest thing is just... Uh, you know, going out and taking care of business this week. And then, you know, the next week will be the same thing. You know, we'll, we'll worry about the playoff picture whenever, you know, that time comes. But right now the biggest thing is just taking care of business from week to week. And with Haskell in this matchup, it's a theme that we've seen with several teams that Arkadelphia's already played this season. A lot of improvement among programs that have had some up and ups and downs in recent years. Same thing here for Haskell Harmony Grove. They've had their ups and downs, didn't win any games in 20. 20, but here in 2021, already won two games this year, plus a huge rivalry win just last week against Haskell Harmony Grove. What can we kind of expect from that matchup, even compared to last year's matchup against Arkadelphia? Yeah, you know, so um, their schemes are the same. You know, they're, they're a tough um, run downhill offense. Um, you know, on, on defense, they're, they're trying to take away the big plays. Um, they want to shorten the game, and, you know, it'll be their homecoming this week, and so it's at their place. and. Um, they're going to be fired up. They're just coming off of a really good win with Boxite, and they're going to be fired up to play. It'll, it should be a good matchup. It should be indeed, and that game is going to kick off at 7 p.m. this Friday. If you can't make it out to Haskell, you can catch it right here on Arkadelphia Badger TV. 
I think that's going to do it for this week's episode, Coach. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for watching as you do every week. And until next time, go Badgers. Go Badgers. Financial support for Inside Badger Football is provided by Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Welch Funeral Home, Austin Wingfield State Farm, Southern Bank Corp, Chad Kesterson Shelter Insurance, Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson and Needbone, Clark County Farm Bureau, Dairy Queen, Pediatrics Plus, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Collection, Midian Digital Creations, Andy's Restaurant of Arkadelphia, and Israel Word Law Farmers Insurance. Inside Badger Football is produced weekly by Washita Baptist University's Rogers Department of Communications and the Washita Sports Digital Network.